Hey, welcome to Rise Church. Thanks so much for joining us online today. We believe that Jesus wants to do so much for you and through you, and we'd love to hear how he's working in your life. Please take a second to email your story to stories at rise-church.com. We hope you leave today feeling encouraged and uplifted. Enjoy the message. Today we're kicking off a brand new series called Passion. Passion, come on, this is gonna be a three-week series. Make sure you are here for every single week of it. It's gonna be so, so good. And um, I, I know in this world we live in that, that a lot of us are passionate about things. And so I thought, man, let's have a little bit of fun in church this morning. Come on, how many you know church can be a little bit of fun sometimes? Come on, if you're not having fun in church, you're going to the wrong church. And so uh, let's have a little bit of fun. And I'm gonna put some pictures on the screen. And if you are passionate about these pictures, just, just make some noise, all right? Come on, how many of you are passionate about some coffee. So good, so good. You know, I used to put a lot of creamer in my coffee, and, and, and in the new year, I said, I'm gonna start scaling back creamer and, and, and have more coffee. I had more creamer than I had coffee. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Are you drinking milk? No, that's coffee. And, and so I've been scaling back, and I realized, I, man, I like coffee. I really love creamer, but I, I, I do enjoy coffee, and I'm passionate about it, so good. Come on, how many of you are a little passionate about music? You love your music. Come on, you jamming out. How many of you are the people in the car that you're just like letting it rip, man, and you pull up at a stoplight, and the people are looking at you like, what is going on? And you don't even care, because you are going for it. I love it. How many of you are passionate about your pets? Come on. They're like, what's... how many of you passionate about our pets? Come on, they're like family. Come on, I, we have a dog, and she's cool. I like her. Um, we'll keep her, we'll keep her. How many of you are passionate about just your, your kid, not just kids in general, like your kids. <laughs> Some of the parents are like, I'm not clapping for that. I'm passionate about school. You put a picture of school up there and I'll, come on. How many of you are passionate about your grandkids? Yeah. I heard somebody say, if I knew grandkids were that awesome, I'd have had them first, you know? And so, last one, last one. Here we go. How many of you are passionate about? Let's go. Come on. That preseason game, we didn't play our good players, all right? So just chillax. Everybody chill. We're going to the Super Bowl this year. It's happening. It's happening. Passion, passion, passion. We're talking about passion um, today. I looked up the definition of passion in the dictionary, and, and I love it. There's, there's multiple de definitions, but the one I found, I, I love this, is this. A strong and barely controllable emotion. It's strong, and it's so just, oh, I, I can barely contain it. Like, it's, it's just, it's good. It's the way I feel about my wife. Like, girl, I'll run off this stage right now. Smooch you right, in, right. Passion. Today, I want to talk about this. Our passion for God. I want to talk about a passion for God that is, it's so strong. It's, it's barely, I can barely control it. We're, we're worshiping right here this morning, and I can, like, I just want to, I just want to show with everything I have how amazing God is, but here's what I know. Passion fades sometimes. My wife and I were talking about this this week, and we were talking about how sometimes, how do we find ourselves less passionate for God? Because I've, I've been there. And sometimes it's because something major comes into your life, or maybe not just something major, maybe it's a bunch of minor things, and it just distracts you. And because of those distractions, your, your focus is less on God and it's more on everything else that's going on around you. Anybody been there before? You know what I'm talking about? Come on, don't polish your halos. Let's be honest in church this morning. But I think more than that, for me personally, it's a slow drift. So I'm passionate for God, but then I slowly, if not, it's not overnight. It's a slow drift. I, I, I don't, prioritize getting up early in the morning and, and, and getting in God's word and letting, not just getting in God's word, but letting God's word get in me. Um, I, 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 love, I love talk radio. I, I love all things podcast and, and, and learning and, and, and sports talk radio. And sometimes I'll, I'll find myself listening to more of that than I am driving in my car with, with my worship music on and letting the presence of God meet me as I drive down uh, 95 and 10 because come on, how many you know the Lord? He's not there unless you bring him on to I-10. And it's a slow drift. We miss a week of church and 
we miss small group and we're not around other people that are there to encourage us and point us to Jesus and it's a slow drift, it's a slow fade and here's what I know that some of you are here this morning and there is a fire on the inside of you for the things of God. Praise God. You are, you are passionate for the Lord this morning and that is an amazing place to be. There are others of you where your passion has faded and you, because you have drifted or because you have those things going on in your life right now and you're so consumed by that that, that God kind of got put to the side a little bit, not on purpose, but it just happened. And wherever you find yourself this morning, wherever you, if you can be honest with yourself, the best thing for you this morning is self-awareness to go on a scale of one to 10, here's where my passion for God is. 10 being on fire, barely controllable, one going, man, I know I used to have it. I just don't know how to get it back. I, I, I wanna try to help you get your passion back this morning. And I wanna do that by just reminding you of who God is. I wanna do that by challenging you. Anybody want passion for God? I believe that. I believe that's why you're here this morning. If you showed up this morning and not really wanting more of a passion for God, what are, what are you doing here? Like, come on, we want more of God in our lives and we want a passion to grow. So here's what I did. I wrote down three thoughts. First, we gotta passionately believe. Passionately believe. John 3, 16, most popular verse in all the Bible. You probably got it memorized on a coffee mug, on a t-shirt somewhere. Come on, somebody probably quilted it for you. For God so loved. He didn't just love, he, he passionately. He, he so loved the world that he passionately gave his one and only son. He generously gave his son so that whoever, come on, raise your hand if you whoever. You're, look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Whoever, whoever, listen, here it is right here, believes in him shall not perish from your sin, but have eternal life. If that's good news, say yeah. So God passionately loves you and he gave his son for you. And if in your life you say, I believe in God and I believe in his son that he sent me, then the good news for you is that you have just been rescued from your sin and you have eternal life with God. Not just for the life to come, but, but here on earth. And I wrote this thought down and I need you to understand this, that what you believe about God, what you believe about God, will determine your passion for him. Meaning this, if you showed up here this morning and you believe, yeah, God's real and Jesus died for my sins and, and I appreciate that. If that's your belief, then, then, then cool. But if you believe you are the God of heaven and earth, you did not have to love me. You saw my sin and you still sent your son Jesus to die for me. That should have been me on the cross Instead, it was your son who died in my place. And because of that, because I put my faith in you, I didn't even have to earn this. Because I placed my trust and my faith in you, everything changed for me. Do you, you see the difference? It's, it, it's, it's your God, and, and Jesus appreciates you, to, oh my gosh, this is what you did for me? It's one thing to believe, it's a different, to passionately believe. And what you believe about God, it's gonna determine your passion for him. So, so let's be real. That's why some people walked in here this morning and when the music started, you couldn't contain it. They were ready to go. And others of you, it took you a little while because your belief about God right now is not passionate. But, but we're gonna get our passion back. And so when we get our passion back, then we're gonna get our excitement back. Romans, Paul says this, hey, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, can we, can we do this this morning? Come on, if we all do it, it won't be weird. If we all do it, it'll be really awesome, actually. Can we just declare with our mouths this morning that Jesus is Lord? Can we do that together? And if you're like, if you're that person that's like, I always hate when he tells me to say something, if you hate this, then you got a problem, okay? And, and, and if you're like, but I don't believe that Jesus is Lord, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're in my church. 
because this is what he wants for your life. So can we do this together on the count of three? You don't have to, but if, if you don't, then what? <laughs> and we're gonna say it like this, Jesus is Lord. That's how we're gonna do it, okay? Not Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. One, two, three. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Woo! If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and then here it is right here, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, there is good news for you today. You will be saved. If you've never, if you've never declared that Jesus is Lord, and you've never believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you've never been saved, come on, today is the day of salvation for you. Like God brought you here today to ignite this newness in your life. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, which means you are made right with God. Before you were separated from God, but now because of Jesus, you're justified. You're made right with God. Now you can come together with him because your sins have been dealt with. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. I love this verse. I love the belief that it talks about, but I also love the, the declaration that we make with our mouths because here's what I wrote down. Belief isn't quiet. If I believe something, I don't keep it to myself. If I believe something, I, I, I talk about it. If I believe something, I shout about it. That's why when you came in here this morning and our worship team was up here leading you, and come on, Ben was killing it this morning. Lindsay, you were awesome too. Come on, so good, so good, so good. They didn't invite you. Hey, everybody, just sing in your heart right now. Don't sing out loud, just do it in your heart. Because that's ridiculous. Because belief isn't quiet. That's why the Bible says make a joyful noise to the Lord, to shout his praises, because belief on the inside of you has to come out, and it comes out in worship. I, I, wanna, I wanna be a preacher that, that isn't quiet. I wanna passionately preach the word of God to you. You ever been in church, and the preacher's preaching, and there ain't no passion? I've been there before, and I'm like, my brother, Everything you're saying is so good. It's just boring. I don't think you're excited about what you're talking about. I want to preach with passion because I'm passionate about what I'm preaching about. I'm passionate about who I'm preaching about. His name is Jesus, and there is no one like him. And then, and then I wanna preach with passion and I wanna have a church that responds with passion. I wanna have a church that says, I'm gonna write some stuff down because I came ready to learn something today. I, I came ready for God to speak some stuff to me today and if he speaks it to me, I wanna write it down so I don't forget it. I wanna bring my word with me today. I wanna bring my Bible with me because I'm passionate about God's word because God's word is life to me. I, wa I want a church that gets a little passionate. It starts with our belief. So, so are you passionately believing that Jesus is who he said he is, yes. that he is the son of God, yes. that he is our Lord and savior, yes. that he alone gives life? Come on, because what you believe, it will determine your passion for him. Wow. Number two, we gotta passionately follow. Once you passionately believe in God and in Jesus, it should then affect everything about your life. It should affect how you follow him with your life. Have you ever met a complete stranger? Complete stranger, how many of you hate meeting complete strangers? Like you're like, I don't wanna talk to anybody, like AirPods are the greatest thing in the world because I can put them on in the grocery store, I don't have to look at anybody and they see them in there so they know not to talk to me. I'm like, what? I can't hear you. <laughs> you ever met a complete stranger though and you knew from meeting them, you've only been talking to them for a couple minutes they gotta be a Christian. Like, they, they have to, they, if this person doesn't know Jesus, then I, don't, I might not know Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's just some, there is something about them. And then you just ask them, why are you so happy? Why do you have so much joy? What's it, what is it? And you already know what the answer is. And they probably already know it about you because you're so awesome too, right? And Jesus is alive in you. And then the two of you start talking. Oh, it's Jesus. Come on, it's amazing. In Acts, it says this, the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. 
This word Christian, you're only gonna find in your Bible maybe one or two times. It's just not in there. But the word Christian is translated this, little Christ. And you know what's cool about that? Is that the believers in Jesus, they didn't give themselves that name. They didn't come up with like, somebody didn't walk into one of the church meetings and like, hey, let's all start calling us Christians. I think that's a cool name. We could be the Christians. It was the unbelievers that gave them that name. They looked on and said, you act like him. You talk like him. You're, you're, you're like a little Christ. And what they probably meant as something negative maybe just might be the most amazing compliment that you could ever receive from somebody because they're literally saying, you look like Jesus. So thank you. But here's the reality. We got a lot of people walking around calling themselves Christians that look nothing like Jesus because they say it with their mouths, but they're not living it out with their lives. They're not passionately following. It's just, it's just words. I'm a, yeah, I'm a Christian. But a Christian means to look like, live like, follow Christ. Jesus said these words in Luke. He said to them all, you listening? Whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to be my follower, must deny themselves, must stop living for themselves, must stop following and doing what they want to do, and they must take up their cross. Come on, this is the key right here. Daily. Following Christ is not a Sunday thing. It's a daily thing. And the reason you probably aren't following him passionately is because you slowly drifted and you're taking days off and that, we've all been there. I have been there as your pastor. I'm sorry, you might need to find a new church. I have drifted. I have taken days off from following Christ where my passion, I go, why, why am I not where I was just a month ago? Because it's, it's daily. And this is the key for all of us. Like Daily we have to decide, I'm gonna follow you today. So Jesus says two options. You keep doing your own thing or you do my thing. You keep pursuing what you want or you pursue and follow me. And can I just say something, Rise Church, and I think you would all agree with me, the world needs a lot less of us and a lot more of Jesus. Raise your hand if you want a lot less of you. Yeah, because you're... You're awesome, don't get me wrong, but I know me. I know me. My family needs less of me and more of Jesus. Our church needs less of me and more of, this world needs less of Adam and more of Jesus. So I have to deny myself and deny my emotions and my feelings and my thoughts that come through my mind and go, no, today I'm gonna follow Jesus. I don't know who was credited with this quote. A lot of people say Gandhi. I'm not really sure, but here it is. He says, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. Can we agree that's our world today, right? People arguing on social media, that's not Jesus. People getting upset about little things. Oh, will you believe this and you believe that? Oh, you, you voted for him? How could you? And then we lash out, and it looks nothing like Jesus. My wife and I were having a conversation about somebody that's just annoying the junk out of her right now. Come on, none of y'all. They come to the 10 o'clock. What's one of somebody in the 10? <laughs> I'm gonna tell the 10 that it's one of y'all, so. And, and I, I was just having, I was challenging her, and I just said, hey, listen, I understand your frustration right now, but what are you doing with it? Are you praying for that person or are you just getting upset at them? Because to call myself a Christian means that, that, that Jesus comes out of me when the fires come up. So, so when you are in a situation where you start to feel that frustration, what comes out of you will show you who you're following right there in that moment. 
and you're either following yourself and your flesh is gonna come out or you're following Jesus and love, joy, peace, patience is gonna come out of your life. Wow. And that, that's, that's what we want, but we're not gonna get it on accident. We're not just gonna wake up and go, yep, I'm more like Jesus today. I haven't read my Bible in a month, but I just all of a sudden am more like Jesus. I have not come to church in six months, but I'm, I just, it's a miracle. It, it's not gonna happen. I told you last week that I was getting back on the, on the healthy train, right? Thank you for the three people that texted me on Monday morning. You being healthy, Pastor? Are you doing it? Are you doing it? <laughs> Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been like, why don't you give out your number? That's why. <laughs> You're not gonna get healthy on accident. Intentional, you have to. And I did, thank you very much. Where'd I go, where'd I go? <laughs> Becoming like Christ, passionately, following him. And if you've drifted, if you've faded, just drift back, <laughs> fade back. We're gonna talk about that on this third point. We gotta be passionately surrendered. This is hard. This is a challenge. I love this verse in John 319. This is big. It says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of the light. This is Jesus talking. This comes right after John 3, 16. Not right after, because 3, 16, then 17, 18, then 19. You know what I'm saying. He doesn't know math. <laughs> this is Jesus talking here. For God so loved the world that he sent his son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, verse 17, but to, but to save it. Verse 19, the light came into the world. The light's here. But they love darkness more than the light. This is the world we live in still today. This was, during, this was true during Jesus' time. This is very true during our days. People love darkness more than the light. Sometimes, as followers of Jesus, we love darkness more than the light. Some of you are in that place right now. This is why your passion is fading. There's some darkness that's creeped in. You're giving more time and attention to that than you are to the things of God. Your passion will fade every time. Only you can answer that. This isn't a message of condemnation. This is just, this is encouragement. God loves you. He wants your passion to be reignited. You want your passion to be reignited. Second Corinthians, Paul says this, and he, Jesus, man, he died for all. You're, you're the all. Yeah, just making sure. My name's not all. He died for, for all of us, that those who live should no longer live for themselves. We're, we're surrendering that. But for him who died for them was raised again. Amen. It is the joy of my life to be able to confess, I'm building my life on you, Jesus. I, I don't want my old life. I want you. Like I really, really do want more of you, God. So when we gather and we sing these songs, I will make room for you. Sometimes that's a challenge because we haven't been making room for him. But some of us, God's calling us, hey, there's some room I wanna make in your heart, but I can't make it until you get rid of some stuff, until you surrender some things. I know this is so stupid and foolish, but let me, can I just share something with you? And I know I might've mentioned this before. Like I got off all social media right before summer. I'll pop on every once in a while. I got on the other day to give my wife a birthday shout out, but I'm not on it at all because I looked inward and I realized it's not good for me. I, I do a lot of comparing with other churches and pastors on it. It's poison. I do a lot of seeing what other people have and what they're doing in their life and it's, it's, it's more comparison type stuff and it's just not good. And then I get mad sometimes when I see some things that people post and I just realized like, before social media, 
I never welcomed that stuff into my life. But now it's the first thing I do in the morning. Literally, the first thing I would do is just welcome crap into my life. And also, it was just a waste of time. I challenge you, if you're tech savvy, go to your apps and click on that social media feed that you do more than the other ones and just click. It'll tell you how much time you spend on it. Why am I not passionate about God? Because you are on social media more than you are spending time with Jesus. And, and I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna say this blanket statement and then I'm gonna get off my soapbox and let me step back on one more time. I think social media is the worst thing that ever happened. I'm just gonna say it. I, I, think, I think it has so many positive things, but we have kicked the positive to the side. I, I, think, it's the, I think it steals your time. I think it steals your emotional energy. I think it steals your joy. And I, I, I just... I felt the Lord tell me, and he told it to me through my wife. The Holy Spirit over here. She said, I, I just think you should take a break. And I said, all right, I'll do it. And then that, that break that I thought I was taking for a short time has become indefinite. And, and, and I'll, I'll just say this, just, just for me, just for me, just for me, because the legalism is when I try to put something on somebody else. I'm not doing that to you. For me, you're welcome, you're welcome. You all should delete. Just throw your phones in the trash on the way out of here. For me, I made room. Something that stole my time, I have made room. If I'm not careful, I'll just fill it with something else. So the question I ask myself all the time, prayed it last night when I couldn't go to sleep because I was thinking about you. What do you want me to surrender to you, God? So for me, a couple months ago, it was social media, but what, what's the other thing, God, in my life that you want me to surrender? Because when I surrender it to you, I can make more room for you. When I do that, then, then some passion's gonna grow in me because I'm gonna replace it with the things of God. So I wanna read a verse of scripture, a couple verses that I hesitated to read because, man, they are challenging and I, I didn't wanna preach it to you if I wasn't there personally. And I'll say this, I'm not fully there, but I'm, I'm going there. I wanna read these verses out of the book of Revelation and Jesus is talking to a couple different churches and he says to this church, you're doing some great things, like some amazing things. Your faith is incredible. It's so, like what you're doing is awesome. But I have this, this one thing against you. You've abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. You abandoned it. You didn't lose it, you left it. So the good news is, you didn't lose it, you left it, meaning you, you can get it back. But you, you have abandoned it. I've been here before, multiple times. How do we, how do we get it back? Think about how far you have fallen. Think about it. Only you can think of this. This isn't for anybody else. This is for you. Think about how far you have fallen. Then repent. And do the works of love you did at first. Meaning, God, I know I've fallen from your love. I know I'm not passionately loving like I, like I used to. How do I do it? J just go back and do the things you used to do. Think about when you first got saved and you first put your faith in Jesus. And you couldn't get enough of God's word. You couldn't stop listening to worship music. Like it's just, it, just was, it was just everything. You couldn't be, if the church doors were open, you were there because you wanted to be around the people of God to just continue to be encouraged and give encouragement away. You were sharing your faith with people. You were praying and talking to God and you were hearing God clear. He was speaking to you. Do you remember that? Just do that again. Do that again. Because he says this, if you don't, like if you don't go back to that place, he's talking to a church and he could say this to us. Hey, if you don't, I will come to you and I'm gonna remove your lampstand. Like I'm gonna remove the light that, that is in your church. I'm gonna find somebody else. I'm gonna remove your lampstands from this place and of influence. 
you do not repent. Is your passion faded? The answer is gonna be, God, I want it back in my life, but it's gonna be more than just prayer. It's gonna be doing the things you did at first. We're gonna invite you down for prayer right now in this moment. You'd have a moment with the Lord and kneel at this altar and just get real with God. And I want you to pray, but it's gonna be more than prayer. I was thinking about the hot months that we're in right now and I can't wait till the cooler months come in about a year from now. And um, I just love sitting around a fire. And if the fire starts to go out, I don't pray to God, God, would you please make this fire burn? Now I go and I throw another log on. That's, we don't just pray, God, I need more passion. No, we're gonna do the things we did at first. Some of the things that we did at first were meeting with the Lord and just being honest with him. So we're gonna invite you to come forward.